with your June mid-month update. Um, I know that many of you are aware that um, the uh, June beginning of the month, the June forecast, was a few days late because I wasn't feeling well. Um, well, it turns out that I have had a little bit of a dance with COVID, and although I am testing negative and I'm feeling a lot better, I'm still doing a little bit of the coughing, so this is going to be short, and I'm going to do my best to save my, my, my voice. <clears throat> um, well, I, I'm recording this on the uh, evening of Thursday, June 16th, but I want to back up just a couple of days to the Sagittarius full moon, because in some ways that is such a powerful event in the middle of the month and in some ways is really setting the tone for much of the remaining uh, uh, part of June. The, the significant thing about the, the uh, full moon on the 14th was that the full moon was squaring Neptune, meaning the sun and the moon were squaring Neptune because um, the full moon is a moon opposition to the sun and Neptune was squaring them both. At the same time, Saturn was at the point of Thales, which is a point which is sextile one side of an opposition and trine the other side of an opposition. And what this means is that Neptune at the apex of the T-square was actually causing stress and um, and and putting uh, uh, adding tension to the to the opposition itself. Remember, this is an informational opposition, Gemini, having to do with communication, uh, with sending of information back and forth, um, a mercurial um, uh, uh, sign to say the least. It's the uh, uh, original home sign or domicile of Mercury. It's important to note that Mercury had just tur has just turned direct and had moved back into Gemini um, at the uh, full moon. But what's significant here is that the Neptune square in some ways says be careful of imagination, of illusion, of fantasy, of all those things that Neptune normally uh, brings us outside of the realms of reality into the realms of imagination and dreams. Now this certainly can be a positive realm. Certainly magic occurs here. Certainly um, imagination um, in some ways creates the scaffolding upon which we use Saturn to build reality um, uh, uh, on later, later on. But the thing here is that Saturn is making the sextiles and the trines. And I think that, that we could spend a lot of time in analysis on this full moon. I mean, we had a, moon, uh, we had a Mars conjunct Chiron. There's this whole sense of bringing the wound out into the open and dealing with it. We um, are, it also had Mercury... Um, although it was moving away from it, separating, it was trining Pluto, bringing secrets out from, you know, from behind the wall or from unconsciousness into awareness. But the real key here is that Saturn, as the release point at the point of Thales, that that we have to keep it real. That's the simple thing. The simple thing here about this full moon is that... Um, this is not a time to dream. This is not a time to imagine. This is not a time to go into other realms and pull things back into this realm. This is a time to keep our feet on the ground, a time to, to do what's practical, and a time to um, pay attention to Saturn. Now, certainly that's not the only thing cooking, and it doesn't last um, throughout the rest of the month. But I just wanted to um, just pick up on that full moon because it's such a powerful one um, and, and it really is with us for a little bit now. Um, here we are, though, on the um, afternoon evening, actually, of Thursday, June 16th. And, um, and, and we have uh, today, this morning... Uh, early this morning, um, the sun formed a trine with Saturn. Again, make it real. Keep things 
um, on the straight and narrow. Don't go off into some fantasy land of things that you'd like to believe or like to see the or, or, or want to um, manifest in the way that you see them. Instead of in, instead of creating Saturn reality out of Neptune. We're going directly to Saturn. We're going to say, this is the way things are. And and again, the sun trine Saturn early in the morning um, is intriguing because the sun makes an exact square with Neptune this afternoon. In a way, Thursday is a replay of the 14th, where again, the dichotomy between fact and fiction, between things we make up, uh, Neptune, and things that are real Saturn become incredibly, incredibly important. This afternoon, the moon moved into Aquarius at 2.44 um, p.m., um, and and this evening, we have an aspect that sometimes I would skip over, but I think that it actually has a little bit of importance today, and that is that Mars is forming a semi-sextile with Uranus. Now, remember, Mars is just past its conjunction with Chiron, and so there's this whole thing about dealing with wounds, um, about facing them head on um, and having them um, resolve rather than having them stop us, and normally we would like to back away from them. The significant thing, though, about this Mars semi-sextile, it's a half of a sextile, Mars semi-sextile to Uranus, um, is that a semi-sextile is um, really more like a quincunx than uh, any other aspect because it falls into that um, Ptolemaic observation that these two planets don't see each other. It's kind of like a non-aspect. But here's the thing. The moon um, moving through Aquarius, when the moon hits 17 degrees of Aquarius... The moon forms a sextile with Mars and a square with Uranus. And so on Friday morning, Friday the 17th, the moon squares Uranus and then, um, and then forms a sextile with Mars. And again, we're getting this kind of duality, this kind of um, the Mars square Uranus is that things are, are breaking through, new things are happening, things are not falling the way we thought they were, and yet at the same time the, um, the moon's sextile with Mars is actually saying the energy still is flowing. And this is important because normally the semi-sextiles are anxious and disruptive and difficult, but I really think that the moon moving through this is giving us somewhere to go. As we move toward the um, 18th, um, we have uh, the moon moving into Pisces in the afternoon, and here we begin to pull in a little bit of, of, of a softer energy. Um, we also have um, on, um, uh, on the 18th, we also have v um, Venus making a square with Saturn, and this is a bit of a harder energy. So here's the way, here's the way, the, um, the way Saturday the 18th falls, and that is that the Venus square Saturn can feel isolating, it can feel lonely, it, we can feel disappointed or discouraged as if something isn't right, we didn't get some warm fuzzy, some pleasure that we were seeking, some money, some something basically um, um, kind of falls away or, or reality says not quite yet. But then by the um, later afternoon when the moon moves into Pisces, then Venus forms a sextile with Neptune. And here it's a very different thing. So we're getting Venus in the morning squaring, uh, or in the midday squaring Saturn, and later in the um, evening sextiling Neptune. And so what starts out as a feeling of discouragement or despair, even a feeling of of like something's wrong or I'm 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 not getting what I want, actually by the evening time turns into something that could be rather delicious. Um, remember, we have Venus in her home sign um, of um, of Taurus, 
and Neptune in its modern home sign of Pisces. And so we're really getting a potential here. If we do the work earlier in the day, that's the Venus square Saturn, even if we don't get goodies out of it, it's likely to uh, pay off well on into the evening. That's the 18th. The 19th is a relatively quiet day, although early in the morning, I mean just after midnight on Sunday morning the 19th, the sun makes a quincunx with Pluto. And this is uh, this is difficult, although it happens at the time of day where we might, by the time we wake up on Monday, already feel like this is past. But remember, the sun here is in Gemini, in the last degrees of Gemini, um, and its quincunx to Pluto basically is a bit of a concern over whether we should go deep, that would be Pluto, um, which is not fun for the uh, uh, Gemini sun, because the G Gemini sun wants to be light. And yet, that uh, sun quincunx Pluto, although it is a bit disorienting, it's a bit um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like we can't resolve it. We can't We can't be content in our lightness. That's the Gemini sun. And yet if we go deep, we are also not content there. Now we do have Venus moving toward a trine um, with Pluto. Um, that's not exact until Tuesday the 21st, but that's beginning to come in. It's kind of putting a little bit of weight behind the heavier plutonic energy. And the other thing here of great significance is that the sun is getting ready to leave Gemini, Gemini being the um, mutable or changeable um, sign of spring, and spring changes into summer. Um, and the sun, the sun actually moves into the sign of Cancer um, at 2.13 a.m. also on Tuesday morning. So we have really um, kind of a, a tougher Sunday that by Monday kind of eases up a little bit. We have Mercury forming a sextile with Jupiter. We have ways in which we can think our way into some more positive place. The moon moving through Pisces makes harmonious or cooperative sextiles with both Venus and Pluto. Remember that Venus-Pluto trine is exact on, the, on Tuesday the 21st, but on Monday the moon falls right in the middle of them, kind of pulling that energy in, and it's almost like we feel comfortable going deep now. Um, we feel like we're ready to go someplace where we haven't gone before, and at the same time, or a little bit later in the day, the moon moves into Aries, which isn't necessarily considered to be a deep sign, but it's a sign that suggests we're willing to go to places where we haven't been. Because Aries is the pioneer, Aries is the sign that will push into places that are new. And so we have this energy setting up some pretty dramatic changes on Tuesday the 21st, which is the first day of summer, and that Venus trine Pluto is exact. And on top of that, the moon, as it's moving through Aries, sweeps across Jupiter and makes a sextile with Mercury. And, and in a way, it's like we're really settling into our feelings, sun in, sun in, um, in, in Cancer. And we're really settling in deep because Venus is trining Pluto. And yet that moon conjoining um, Jupiter and sextiling Mercury, Mercury still in high frequency, intellectual, um, non-deep. Is that a word? Non-deep? Undeep? That's probably not any better. But the moon forming a sextile with Mercury in light-hearted Gemini, but we're getting this dance of we're being pulled deeper, and yet we're able to step into those realms without being overwhelmed by them. I think this is really important. Um, on the 22nd, um, Venus moves from Taurus where it's been um, uh, and been at home, and it's been in a power place for itself. But Venus moves into Gemini in the afternoon of on Wednesday, um, Wednesday um, the 22nd. Earlier in the day, midday, the moon conjoins Mars. Um, this is in Aries, so we have a little bit of a punching match here, I think. Um, we have a little bit of, the, there is definitely movement 
But remember that sun in Cancer is hanging out in a deeper place now. We're not as willing to let go of something that is true, something that we're feeling, something that we're getting our feelings wrapped around. Um, we're not quite as willing to let go of them as when the sun was in Gemini and we're okay to go here and then here and then back to here. Um, and yet it's interesting because as the sun moved into Cancer yesterday, then the uh, Venus moving into Gemini still gives us a little bit of an out. We're still ready to kind of entertain something intellectually that we might like the idea of that a few days ago we might have had a difficult time with. That's Wednesday the 22nd. Um, on Thursday the 23rd, um, we have the moon moving into Taurus, and this settles the energy some. We're coming into a couple of days where where we want to feel like our feet are back on the ground, but of course we need to remember that as the moon moves through Taurus, now that Uranus is in Taurus, um, as the moon moves through Taurus, it will also conjunct Uranus. It'll do that on Friday afternoon. And so normally when the moon moves through Taurus, it's really settling, but there's something here that can break through, even though we want to hold on to our kind of determined, grounded, common sense, something might explode or push us through things by Friday afternoon. Now, back to Thursday, the moon moves into Taurus, but also the sun and Venus both make difficult aspects. The sun makes a half of a square um, with Uranus, and this is disruptive. Um, this is um, a breakthrough or break up. It, it, it's kind of uh, something is set up and we now push through another, another layer. It's not even a push through. It's not Saturn. It's like explode through. We, we, we power our way through. It's almost like, like there's a wall and, and something hits the wall and the wall just disappears. It dissipates. It explodes. Um, and that's on, the, on, on Thursday afternoon on the 23rd. But Venus is also making a half square, square with Chiron. And this might be a little bit more difficult because Venus is what we like and Chiron is kind of what we need to learn even if it's distasteful, even if it brings up memories that are not pleasant, even if it brings up old feelings of, um, of, of, of less than, of, of low self-esteem, uh, wounds, etc. And this... Um, Venus uh, semi-square to Chiron might make us, uh, or it might encourage us um, to uh, kind of put up some boundaries or barriers because we don't necessarily want to feel everything that, that we're feeling. And then the moon joining up with Uranus on Friday afternoon might be the thing that allows us to push through that, to break, to break free of that. On Saturday the 25th, we have um, Mercury early in the morning, or very late on Friday night, depending upon where you are. Um, Mercury makes a square and a half with Pluto. And this um, square and a half, or, or sesqui, sesqui one and a half, sesqui square, Mercury's sesqui square with Pluto, um, in a way, um, it's, it's like we don't want to believe what we're learning, or maybe it's that... Um, Mercury, the communicator, the um, cerebral part of us, has gone into the underworld, found something, brings it out into the light, and it's not very tasteful. It's something that's difficult. This is this can be this can be a bitter pill that we have to swallow, without the proverbial spoonful of sugar to make the medicine go down. There is no easy way through this. The fact is that on Saturday, the 25th, not only does Mercury make that tough square and a half with Pluto, the, the I don't want to know what I just learned, but what I just learned I know is true and I got to deal with it, but I wish I didn't know. Not only does Mercury make that hard aspect with Pluto, but by 6 a.m., that's of course West Coast time, so it's 9 a.m. on the East Coast, and adjust your time zone accordingly. 
by 6 a.m. the moon makes a square with Saturn. This is another layer of running into a wall where we're not having an easy time um, on late Friday night into very early Saturday morning. But thankfully, the energy changes. And the energy changes still before many of us may get out of bed on Saturday morning, at least on the West Coast, because at 7 o'clock, 7 a.m., the moon forms a sextile with Neptune, and then it forms a trine with Pluto um, midday. And both of these are smoother energies. It's almost like we figure out a way to work with that which we didn't want to know. And then at 4.13 p.m., the moon moves into Gemini, and that gives us more flexibility, more fluidity, more ability to move with whatever it is that we're, that we're learning. Sunday is a relatively quiet day from an astrological perspective. The moon does join up with Venus very early in the morning, just after midnight, which means we might feel that um, moon conjoining Venus um, late Saturday night, which would certainly be more pleasant um, than when we're sleeping um, through Sunday morning. But by Sunday morning, the moon makes a sextile with Jupiter. And again, this is still pretty early in the morning. Um, 6.26 a.m. is when it's exact. And, 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 and this really, it's interesting because on Sunday, the, there is no real outer planet or planetary action. The action is from the moon to Venus conjunction and the moon to Jupiter sextile. And both of these occur before 7 a.m. West Coast time. So it's almost like we get up into the day and the day is rather malleable. It becomes maybe what we put into it. It's less influenced by what's going on up there. As we move on toward the 27th, which is a Monday, um, Mercury forms a sextile with Chiron, and Mars forms a sextile with Saturn. Both of these aspects are supportive, cooperative aspects. Um, Mercury sextile with Chiron, although it occurs very early in the morning, exact at 4.46 a.m., we'll still be feeling that in the early part of the day. And this Mercury sextile Chiron basically allows us to communicate in a way that allows our vulnerability to create real communication rather than creating boundaries or, or putting blame on someone else. That Mercury sextile Chiron is an opportunity um, to forgive or to at least acknowledge that there are two sides of any discussion and therefore to kind of soften um, our, our approach or our hard edge. Um, and that is duplicated or said again by the sextile between Mars and Saturn that's not exact until the afternoon. It's exact at 3.28 p.m. But Mars and Saturn are the malefics. Traditionally, these are the difficult planets. And it's not that they're bad planets. It's that they're harder to master. And so a square between Mars and Saturn is perhaps more difficult than a square between, let's say, Venus and Jupiter, because Venus and Jupiter are benefics. They're, they're easier to manage. Now, what this really means is that given the sextile between Mars and Saturn, it's like this gives us the ability to work in a way that the planet of, of, of assertion, of anger, of confrontation, um, of, of, of aggression, Mars, in a way is working harmoniously to support that of Saturn, the planet of authority, of structure, of, of top-down, this is the way it is, of karma, you get what you deserve. And normally when Mars and Saturn interact, they have a bit more trouble and yet on Monday the 27th, um, we actually have a day 
where there is potential not only for healing from that Mercury sextile Chiron earlier in the morning, but but an, an ability to organize reality in a way that allows us to move forward in a way that we hadn't ma- imagined before. Um, this can be a very profound day. Um, also, the moon forms a trine with Saturn and a sextile with Mars. Um, that means that 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 moon mars sextile is being supported by smooth aspects from uh from the moon the moon moving through gemini and this is just another clue as to the potential for the upside of manifesting something that's positive on monday the 27th as we move on toward um tuesday the 28th Um, we have Neptune, which actually technically turns retrograde on the 28th. The fact of the matter is that Neptune has been moving so slowly as it's moving toward this stationary retrograde that it has barely been moving at, at all. Matter of fact, Neptune reached 25 degrees of Pisces back in mid-May, a month and a half ago. And it's not even traveled one half a degree in six weeks. That's how slow Neptune is moving. And in fact, Neptune will... Um, it is at 25, almost 25 and a half degrees. And although it is actually turning retrograde um, on um, on the 28th, um, it doesn't leave that 25th degree. It doesn't back into 24 degrees of Pisces until the second week of August. So for all practical purposes, from the second half of May, all of June, all of July, and the first part of August, um, Neptune is pretty much staying in the same place. It moves a half a degree one way and then a half a degree back the other way, but that's like almost no movement at all. And this gives that Neptune a tremendous amount of power. Remember, when a planet slows down, it gains more power. When Mercury slows down to turn retrograde or direct, that's when Mercury has more power, and sometimes it makes it more difficult to deal with because we're used to it at a certain frequency, and then all of a sudden it slows down to a lower frequency and it gains more power. Well, the same is true for the outer planets, except unlike Mercury, which only lasts retrograde for three weeks and can cover 8 to 15 degrees or so in that three-week period of time, Neptune only covers one half a degree in two and a half months. Is that right? May, June, July, actually nearly three months. Um, And so Neptune is in its power. And of course, that Neptune in many ways um, is both the creative imagination and the power to mislead or to be misled. And so Neptune is an important player now, and as it turns retrograde, and as it builds up a little speed retrograde over the next months, we're going to be doing some revisiting to older issues that we thought had been settled as we uncover let's say, as we recover um, the truth from what we didn't see earlier because Neptune is in such a heightened state right now. So that takes us up through um, the 28th. And on on Tuesday, the 28th, we we also have the moon um, leaving Gemini, moving into Cancer, heading toward a new moon. The new moon is exact in the evening of the 28th, um, actually 7.52 p.m., and we'll look at that chart in just a moment. But we have um, the moon moving into Cancer early in the morning, 4.53 a.m., and then we have the sun making a square, exact square to Jupiter at 5.59 p.m., that's nearly 6 p.m., and then the moon squares Jupiter at 7.43 p.m., 
And then there's the new moon at 7.52 p.m. Why am I detailing all these dates? I mean, all these times so exactly? It's because this new moon is square Jupiter, and this can be very, very powerful. Um, it, 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 It is very, very powerful, and I will tell you why. When we look at lunations, new moons and full moons, the first thing that we look at is... Is the moon and or the moon and the sun are is the moon or are the moon and the sun making any aspects close aspects with another planet? If they are, that becomes the flavor of the new moon, um, in this case new moon or full moon in, in other cases. If they are, that becomes the flavor of the lunation, the new moon or the full moon. Now, in this particular case, the actual lunation, the actual um, Cancer new moon is at 7 degrees of Cancer and 22 minutes. Jupiter is at 7 degrees of Aries and 18 minutes. That means it's 4 minutes of arc. That's 1 15th of a degree away from being an exact square to the sun and moon at the moment of the new moon itself. It's important to understand that Jupiter in Aries is very different than Cancer. Remember, Jupiter is exalted in Cancer. What does that mean? Jupiter likes being in Cancer more than it likes being anywhere else when it's not in its home sign of Sagittarius or Pisces, for that matter. Um, Jupiter in Aries, however, is a forceful, pushing energy. It's pushing into new territory. It's not unhappy there, but it's so different than the Cancer new moon, which is receptive. It's passive. It's waiting for something to come into its sphere. The new moon in Cancer um, is nurturing, but true nurturing isn't pushing someone into doing something. True nurturing isn't yelling at someone to make them practice their saxophone or do their homework or, or to yell at an employee who's late. That's not nurturing. That's more Saturnian, hard-ass discipline. Nurturing... In, in the Cancerian sense, is creating an environment where growth, where productivity, where magic can happen. In fact, the womb is a Cancerian thing because, the, remember, the moon is at home in Cancer. So this new moon is strong. In some ways, it's the strongest new moon of the year just by virtue of the moon being in its home sign. But this new moon in Cancer, which says nurture, encourage, um, contain in a way that is um, loving, uh, a mother, um, basically creating safe space for her children, her home, her family. Um, that's a Cancerian energy. It's building a wall of safety for security around something. And yet that Jupiter is going, something new, something exciting. I want to go there. I want to do that. And so this new moon might be a little bit crazy making, um, especially when we add in the fact that Venus in Gemini, remember Venus doesn't love being in Gemini because because Gemini's Mercury sign. And Venus in Gemini is a bit scattered. Venus says, I like this and I like that. <laughs> and so Venus in Gemini is, is, is not only being pulled in two directions, everything that it values is coming up in multiplicities, um, in, in dualities. And at the new moon, Venus is forming a sextile, Venus at 7 degrees, 16 minutes, um, 7 degrees of Gemini is forming a sextile with Jupiter at 7 degrees of Aries, and a semi-sextile 
That's that annoying semi-sextile. That's two planets that are so close together that it's like two musical notes that can rub each other wrong. It sounds dissonant. And that Venus is kind of in the mix, but it's working better with Jupiter than it is with the new moon in Cancer, where it's a semi-sextile. And because that new moon in Cancer just wants to settle, it wants to, it wants to basically um, nurture the garden. Uh, and of course, being right just after the summer solstice in many places, gardeners are quite busy this time of year because things are growing very fast and that there's a whole lot going on, even though things have not necessarily reached total fruition. Remember, cancer is about behind the wall. It's hidden often. Nevertheless, this is a very powerful um, uh, new moon uh, because of its square to Jupiter and, and, and that sense of we can compensate or overcompensate by being so confident and so out there that we forget that it's really a time to pull in. Um, we need to keep in mind that this new moon is best expressed by not pushing outward too hard too fast, even though Jupiter, Chiron, and Mars, all in Aries, are all suggesting that it's good for us to push outward hard and fast. And remember, we're still coming off of that Mars sextile Saturn um, because that was that whole sense of organization and productivity. And so we have this little dance going on between the inner and the outer, which I think is quite significant. And there's one other thing I want to mention, and that is that within... 40 minutes of the new moon, the moon makes a quintile with Mars in Aries. The sun actually moves into that quintile, because the sun moves slower than the, uh, than, than the moon. The sun moves into that quintile um, late Wednesday night, actually early Thursday morning, 12.30 a.m. And so this new moon in Cancer is not only square Jupiter, semi-sextile Venus, but it's also very closely, very closely quintile Mars. I mean, very closely. Now, why is this important? Well, this is important because it gives us a creative way of manifesting that Aries energy. That's the Mars in Aries. Um, because remember, quintiles are creative. And they're charismatic. They're, they're, they can be spiritual, but they're more about the magic of creating something that is not off a blueprint. It's not out of a textbook. It's almost like we're making it up, but it's natural. Quintiles are beautiful. They're Venusian because they actually have to do with a geometry that's related um, to Venus. And for those of you who know my work on quintiles, you know that the five-pointed star of Venus, the Venus Earth, the Venus, what's called the Venus star, is a five-pointed star. And that quintiles are five-pointed um, stars, uh, uh, two planets that are quintile are 72 degrees or one-fifth of a circle apart, meaning this new moon is on an adjacent point of a five-pointed star to Mars. And this gives us the ability to be creative in a beautiful way. This gives us the ability to use that Martian energy, that Aries energy, as long as, and here's the danger, as long as we don't get so enthralled with with our own sense of power or our own sense of confidence, Jupiter, as long as we don't get so wrapped up with Jupiter that we take things too far, that'll be the square between the new moon and Jupiter. As long as we don't get too crazy with Jupiter, this new moon quintiling Mars gives us a way to actually do something in the outer world without having to sacrifice the integrity of the security of our boundaries. Very, very powerful new moon. I'm really liking this new moon. It'll be interesting to see um, how it plays how it plays out. Um, <clears throat> Uh, by the way, also um, on the day of the new moon, a little bit later in the day, Venus makes a quintile with Neptune. And again, this is about beauty. This is about romance. Now, we can mislead ourselves or others or be misled by someone else 
But the fact that that's a quintile, that Venus is both sextiling Jupiter and quintiling Neptune, gives me the sense that this Venus is going to work in our favor. And so I think here it's about going to our values about and, and about trusting what is valuable to us rather than just going off with whatever the next idea is and then taking it to Jupiter too far. We can't go too far. That is Tuesday, June 28th, and the new moon in Cancer. On Wednesday, the 29th, um, we have Mercury moving into a quintile with Jupiter. The quintiles are quite active. Um, This is, again, this is important because it's creative. We're getting a lot of creativity, and creativity that really is moving us in a Venusian, in a beautiful direction. That would be on Wednesday. On Wednesday, though, there's also a couple of septiles that come into play. And the only reason I'm mentioning this is that after the quintiles, which are so creative, that the septiles are rather otherworldly. And we might, by Wednesday, um, late Tuesday night even, and on into Wednesday morning, um, get a feeling like there's something happens that is fated. Something happens that is... Um, Kind of like, I I think of Bob Dylan's song, A Simple Twist of Fate. Um, It's like a plot twist. Um, And so we'll have to watch for that on on Wednesday. On Thursday, that's the day that the sun makes the exact quintile with Mars. Remember, the new moon is quintile Mars um, um, back on Tuesday um, evening. But now the sun makes that quintile with Mars on Thursday morning at 12.30 a.m., so it's really playing through on Tuesday night, on into Wednesday, and even on into Thursday. And again, I think here this is a way in which we can use our our ego assertion in a positive way as long as we don't push too far, too fast, as long as we don't let that Mars get too red hot I think we'll be in good shape. Also, on Thursday, um, mid-afternoon, 5.39 p.m. um, Western Time, Pacific Time, the moon moves from Cancer into Leo, and now the energy moves outward a bit. Um, There's a sense of things actually flowing out into the environment. Um, That moon, by the way, um, as it moves into Leo, will square Mars and oppose Pluto. Um, remember that Mars is at 26, almost 27 degrees of Aries. Pluto is at 27 degrees, <clears throat> 27 degrees of Capricorn. That Mars is coming into a square with Pluto that doesn't occur until July 1st in the evening. But boy, on June 29th, June 30th, we're already feeling it. And as the moon moves through the last degrees of Cancer um, on Thursday, um, Thursday midday, it'll square Mars. Thursday midday, it'll oppose Pluto. And Thursday late afternoon, it'll move into Leo. This is some real action on Thursday, June 30th. And that will lead us up to Friday, July 1st where we have quite a bit of action. We have the um, uh, Sun-Saturn sesquisquare, um, and this is kind of bumping into a wall. We have Mars square Pluto. Uh, We're coming into Mercury square Neptune on Saturday. Uh, The beginning of July starts off with some real intense rock and roll energy, and we'll leave it at that, only mentioning in passing that July 4th weekend, Independence Day weekend in the United States, we have um, uh, we have the moon moving into Virgo, we have Mars moving into Taurus, we have Mercury moving into Cancer. Um, this is a huge shift. We have a big shift of energies with three planets, or two, two major planets and the moon changing signs. And so I really think that we're going to, once we're in July, we're going to be again in a different The landscape is going to be different, Um, but I really think that um, July starts off with a with a bang with that um, Mars square Pluto, and we'll just have to take it as it comes. So that's it for now. 
Um, again, I apologize for uh, my, my coughing and my raspy voice. Hopefully by the um, uh, July forecast, um, I will be fully recovered. Thank you all so much for your well wishes. Um, and, and one last thing that I'm going to mention here is that normally the mid-month update is uh, distributed only to my $3 a month Patreon people. I'm again going to be distributing this widely to everyone um, because my original forecast at the beginning of the month was also rather scant because I was still I thought I was recovering. I was actually just coming down with COVID. Um, and so just to keep everyone in the loop, this will be a public um, this will be a public uh, YouTube video. Feel free to share it. Also, feel free to check out my Patreon to see the variety of other videos that I offer um, to my Patreon supporters and subscribers to whom I am indebted. Thank you very much for keeping all of these projects alive, and I look forward to seeing you down the road. Remember, think cosmically, act locally. I'm right with you.